When it comes to solar eclipses, where you stand matters. A 99% partial eclipse is not good enough. In this video, we're going to explain why you should get to the path of totality, if at all possible. Here we have a graph that's showing you how the light level is going to change over the course of a solar eclipse from the onset, first contact, to totality, when the moon completely covers the sun. There are two takeaways. One is it does not get particularly dark during a partial eclipse. And the other is that the darkness falls quite suddenly right at the end of partial as we plunge into the total eclipse. So in this graph, the top of the graph is basically where you are seeing full sunlight. That is one full sun on a cloud-free day, kind of like this. Here we have what it looks like through a solar filter. This was taken with a telescope with an appropriate filter on it. This vertical axis means that we are dropping by a factor of 10 with each one of these steps. This is what we call a log scale. So it goes down to a tenth of the brightness, then a hundredth, then a thousandth, then a ten thousandth, and then a hundred thousandth. And so here you can see this is a 10 times drop with each of these blocks. The bottom vertical axis represents one hundredth of full sunlight. This is the level that the sunlight should drop to when the sun is totally eclipsed during totality. Now the horizontal axis at the moment shows the eclipse magnitude. This is the fraction of the sun that is blocked out. So this would be a 10% eclipse, 20%, 30%, all the way to 90 and 100% eclipsed. Zero, zero is first contact. The moon is just touching the sun and is about to start blocking it out. And when we get to the other end of the axis at one, this is second contact. This is when totality begins. It takes about 75 minutes to get from C1 to C2. And so what we have is a 75 minute difference. And so that means that each one of these horizontal blocks across here is seven and a half minutes. So we can actually change that into a time scale. So starting from first contact at zero minutes and ending with totality at 75 minutes. So let's start with the solar eclipse from first contact. Actually, this image is showing about a 10% eclipse. But the sun is taking its first bite out up in that far left corner. As the sun is being eclipsed, and we get into almost an hour into the eclipse, we won't even notice that the sun is being eclipsed. So at this point, we've blocked out about three quarters of the sun. And we won't even have really noticed because as the sun is being blocked out by the moon, our eyes are adjusting just like they adjust as we walk into a dark room. Our pupils dilate, they open up to let in more light. So we wouldn't even notice if we weren't paying attention to what was going on. Now, at this point, we start to notice that there's a change in the brightness. It's kind of like the sun has just set. It's after the sun set, but it's still kind of bright blue. And so we notice that it's different, but it's still very bright out there. It's like just after the sunset. So at 85% eclipse, the moon has covered 85% of the sun. It's still no darker than being in the shade on a sunny day. So here we've got to a 90% eclipse. This is actually what we got in the October 2023 annular eclipse. If you were lucky enough to see that, the moon blocked out 90% of the sun. But that still means that there was 10% of the sun still showing. And that's pretty bright. So if you were somewhere in the partial eclipse phase, you would have seen something that looks like this at 90%. And it still leaves this thin sliver of the sun showing. And that's still a lot of light. As we get to over an hour, about 70 minutes into the eclipse, it's only as bright as an overcast day. So although hopefully we have clear skies and we can see the sky, it's not super dark. At 95%, it really is an overcast day darkness. In the last minute, brightness fades from 100 to 1,000 times as you are plunged into darkness. So it goes from a little darker than an overcast day all the way to late twilight or full moon dark in about one minute. 
It is much faster than anything else. And then you get to see totality. Now, I want to point out here where a 99% partial eclipse falls. So you can see that you've got 1% of the sun showing. It's one one hundredth of the brightness of full day sun, but it's still a thousand times brighter than totality. Likewise, if you're at 99.9% .9 partial eclipse, sounds great. 99.9, .9, that's nearly 100%, isn't it? But one thousandth of the sun is still showing. And what that means is that you still have at least 100 times more light coming from the sun than you have during totality. So you cannot see the same things that you see during a total eclipse. So outside the path of totality, even at 99.9% .9 eclipsed, you do not get the same change in temperature or wind changes. You get very little changes in how animals or people behave. You don't see the shadow bands. You don't get this dramatic plunge into darkness. You don't get to see Bailey's beads, these wonderful beads of sunlight you see on the surface of the moon as the moon is getting to total eclipse. You do not see the diamond ring. That's the last valley letting in sunlight as the moon is being moved into place in front of the sun. And then during totality, you do not see the little bits of pink prominences that you can see flaring out from the edge of the moon, and you do not see the corona. The corona is this incredible sight of wispy beauty around the black moon that is only visible at 100% totality. Also, it doesn't get dark enough for you to see the sunset colors that you can witness around the horizon during totality. And you will not see stars and planets. During totality, you should be able to see Jupiter and Venus at the very least, and maybe some of the fainter planets, depending on how dark it gets. But at 99.9%, .9%, you will not see that. So finally, to experience the sudden plunge into deep twilight, the sudden return of daylight a few minutes later, and all the other awesome wonders of a total solar eclipse, you must get yourself into the path of totality.